Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. I have a special guest here, Dr. Michael Mash from Barbell Rehab to tell you guys all about back pain with barbell squats and what you can do to help fix it. We're gonna go through three simple tips here and we're gonna talk about each one and the modifications that you can make to your training in order to help reduce the back pain that you're experiencing and get you back to full training. So let's go ahead and dive into it. What's up guys, Dr. Michael Mash with Barbell Rehab. Today we're gonna go through three simple steps that you can use to help your back pain during squats. Number one, we need to talk about about pain as a biopsychosocial model. Meaning, we used to think when people had pain that a form fix was the easiest. And sometimes a form fix does work. But when we really zone out and we look at the person as a whole, there are a bunch of factors that can affect pain. So we like to say that pain is a multifactorial experience. From a biopsychosocial model, that means that sure, there's going to be some biomechanical things that we can fix, but there's also going to be some psychological and sociological things that we can work with too. So number one, things like unmanaged stress, things like having false beliefs about pain. So we wanna make sure that we address that and we wanna use language that encourages robustness and not necessarily fragility. So things like making sure people don't have the false idea that their back can really easily go out of place. That might lead to a little bit of fear and that can drip into having back pain during squats. So we wanna make sure we're using empowering language. Your back is strong and stable, trust me. There's no reason that it's going to be anything of going out of place too easily. So we wanna look at that first. Yeah, as physical therapists, we've seen a lot of patients come into the clinic and say things like, oh, my back's out of place and another healthcare provider has told me that I'm not gonna be able to squat anymore or that I'm just not built for squatting and I'm not going to be able to squat heavy. None of that is true. And we have seen clients that have experienced back pain for weeks to months to years change things about their squats as well as their belief systems and get back to doing heavy squats and training hard again. Yeah, so I think that's really important that you touched on that belief system model because we want to make sure, sure, stick around for this video because we are gonna give you some form tips that you can do, but we wanted to make sure that we covered this first and foremost because guys, false beliefs about pain, biopsychosocial model, these things matter. So to sum up tip number one, I want you guys to think of your back as strong and robust. Sure, just like any other joint, any other part of the body, it can get sore at times, but it should not make you fear squatting. So now we're gonna roll with tips number two to three and help you out even more. The second factor that you need to consider when you have back pain squatting is how much volume of squatting have you done recently based on what you are accommodated to chronically. Meaning, if you're used to doing squats maybe two times a week for a few sets, and you jump right up to doing five times a week squats with a huge number of sets every workout, that's gonna be a huge increase in volume, and that could be leading to pain even if there's no problems at all with your form or with anything else going on. That could just be a workload management issue, and by progressively increasing your volume by closer to 10% per week, you could reduce that pain experience without changing any other factors and wasting time worrying about your form and other things like that. Yeah, and I think it's really important that you bring the volume thing up because a lot of times when people make a load management error with volume, they will fix it with adding more mobility drills, more of a longer warm up, a longer cool down. While these things will all pr uh, promote that transient change in pain, right? What we really need to look at is optimizing that volume. And that'll bring us right into our second aspect that I wanna talk about with programming is the intensity. Just like you can spike volume too quickly, you can also spike intensity too quickly. Now, I like to program based on the RPE scale or rating of perceived exertion. Basically, that's where the client self-selects how difficult the weight felt to them. So it's a relative intensity thing. And if we look at RPE on the scale of zero to 10, 10 being the most difficult lift you've ever done, and nine meaning very difficult, but you could have done one more, eight, difficult, you could have done two more, and then so on and so forth. I like to get that sweet spot RPE or the average RPE of the working sets right around 8.0. Meaning, you don't need to consistently take your squats to failure in order to see uh, performance increases, strength, and hypertrophy increases as well. So, if you're somebody that's having back pain with squatting and you're consistently taking your squats to failure, one of those low hanging fruit changes that we can make is why don't you just stop one to two reps shy of failure on the majority of your working sets. Guys, that can make all of the difference when it comes to back pain during squats. 
So we encourage you to think about your individual pain experience and think about, are you getting yourself into a cycle of just adding more and more volume, more and more accessories, more and more things to try to help it, and really just getting yourself into a loop of too much volume, too much intensity, or where can you pull back and where can you progress to see changes here? Now that we talked about all of the different factors that can affect pain, and then we talked about load management errors and tweaking volume and intensity, let's dig into some form aspects that may be contributing to your back pain. Number one, when we're doing a heavy axial loaded barbell squat, we wanna make sure we're getting a nice tight core and bracing effectively. A good brace where Matt is going to uh, show us here is simply taking a big breath of air and holding it. Go ahead and do us, give us a couple reps here and perfect. One more. Now, with an effective brace, when somebody takes a big breath and holds it, one breathing pattern that I tend to cue people out of is rib flare. And rib flare is when somebody takes a big breath and they just get into all kinds of spinal extension. And that's where the rib cage lifts up and we get this increased distance between the bottom of the rib cage, top of the pelvis. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with this position. Spinal extension is a normal position that we do in everyday life. But from a mechanical efficiency standpoint and from an optimizing the squat, we wanna make sure that that rib cage is drawn down when we take that big breath because now we're gonna get that 360 degree core brace versus relying primarily on our spinal extensors. So especially for our folks that have back pain that's exacerbated with bending backward, if we get into that rib lift position, that's just gonna put them into a position that is already provocative. So let's do that one more time. Let's say you're dealing with back pain during squats and you're flaring. Let's draw that rib cage down first and then take that big breath of air there and give us a few reps. So that is one thing that I look to, like to look at from a form aspect. If somebody's dealing with back pain during squats is are you rib flaring? Perfect. Big thank you to Michael Mash for coming on this video and helping you guys with these tips. If you guys want to learn more from Michael and you are evidence-based coaches and clinicians looking to learn from the research, Michael has a really great review for you. Every month he sends out three new research articles that are relevant to lifters and coaches and clinicians working with weightlifters. So if you want to be subscribed to that, go ahead and click the link in the description below. Thanks so much for coming on and we will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for having me on, Matt.